Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Forrester. Thank you so much for coming to the part two of my time capsule. I will be showing you what's inside my time capsule. It's nothing that I would bury, but it's a giant container where I collect the most meaningful things to me. And I basically buried it in my room. It's just standing there. And I do look into it whenever I feel the need to, to get some comfort. I don't like that my hair's on my shoulder. <laughs> there so I will be continuing to show you what is inside the time capsule now if you were here for my previous video I had shown some personal things and accomplishments that I have um, reached or gained so I hope that you'll check that video out and if you're already up to date then you can come and stay right here I'm going to resume and show you the folder that I left off in now in this folder I have a poem book, pictures, plays, certificates, and let's just get right down to it. I'm going to start with this side. Now this is a CD that my father has created. The band that he used to be in, I don't know if they're existent anymore, but they're called Under the Shadow. Cool band. It's legit. It was legit in everything. Oh, not broken. That's the cover. One, two, three, four songs. It's actually a Christian band here. And then... Let me see if I can put it the back. <laughs> okay. And I have their CD right here. Of their music. It's one of the early accomplishments of my father. And right now he's doing more work with bands and DJ gigs. Things like that. His passion is music. So he's chasing after his dream, right? Which is what I'm doing right now. This is an artwork that my friend of mine did for me. She knows that I am obsessed with Invader Zim, so she gave me an Invader Zim poster board thing. I have a nomination certification. I was nominated for what? I don't even remember. The National Society of Collegiate Scholars membership. I have to pay to get in whatever that is and so I did and I still don't use the sources. I still don't know what the heck it is. I am members of like two of them and I don't understand what the heck it is and what I'm supposed to do there but I wasted $200 getting into those things because I don't know they made me feel cool which is another way of how an obstacle of how numbers validate you. This this is a book I got. Now again, I have some memories in here that I don't remember too much, but I know that they meant to me, so I don't throw them away, and others I do if I feel that they weren't of any importance, but this is a poem book. I got this years ago. It's beautiful. It's called Plum, and I was just fascinated with this poem book. I've read this like a trillion freaking times if i were to tell you what book i read the most that i read a trillion times it would be this one plum by tony mitten and illustrated by mary grandpa and i just don't know what it is about this book but something about the way that the poems were written and what they say or the way that they put it in it's just it was just amazing to me and i just had to keep it and it's all run down a little bit. I still don't know where I got it from. And I wish I did, but I'm just glad that it was something close to me. Let's see what I have in here. Hmm. Okay. So, I have a picture. I used to role play on YouTube.com. Invaders and stuff. Back when the streams, the YouTube, YouTube. They kind of had chats. They had secret chats. You made a link with the chat and you could post it in your account. And in your account, you could have 
a community place where people can kind of comment and do things like that. YouTube was like very different when I was little. And there we used to kind of like role play characters, right? So we role played in the Invader Zen universe and kind of invented our own characters. So I had a friend named Brittany and she invented this person named Light Sim from Invader Zim. And I had Dark Sim. Let me see if that picture is here. Yes. And this was my Dark Sim. And their story was that they lived inside crystals because they were creations. They were created clones from Dark Sim, but then they eventually turned into their own aliens, and one was angelic and one was a demon, and who knows what, but... And I still don't know where that friend is, but I'm really grateful about her. Oh, always cherish all those times that we would roleplay together and stuff. Now, here is another friend called Hector Vera. Let's see. I was 15 years old in 2009. To a great friend, I hope you like it. He was studying animation and he made me this. He knew I loved Invader Zim, so he made me this picture and I thought it was the cutest thing ever. And it means a lot to me, so I kept it this whole time. I don't know where that guy is right now. But I met him at church. Now here, I have like a big collage of picture cartoons and things like that. I mixed Invader Zim with my own characters, and because my own characters are in here, I will not show you what the drawing is. Because I don't want anyone stealing them. But I will tell you that it has the things that I like. So I like music, I like writing, I like angels, I like Invader Zim. I, li I hate evil things. I love computers. I like the rainbow. Uh, what else, what else? I love art. And that's basically it. And then just talking about how much I like candy and Sprite and chocolate and popcorn. That's it. Here's another. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so this is a project I did for school. They're made out of meat. Um, There's a story, I guess, called They're Made Out of Meat. I don't remember what it is that I've been doing, but I really like the drawing that I did. So I kept it. I really liked the class that he was teaching, so I kind of stuck with it. I remember that I had we had to, we were based on levels of reading, and I had to read Frankenstein, and everyone else had to read easier books, and that made me angry because I wanted an easy way out of the assignments because school was hard for me. So, but I should be honored that I was one of the highest readers. Right? Now these are pictures of my characters, and I will not show them. All right, now this, this is a St. Valentine's Day story that my friend made for me. Now, I was in love with Sam, she was in love with Dib, and we kind of created a stories about how we loved each other and wrote this down. And she kind of made me that story, which was really sweet. Or did I do the story? I don't even remember this. No, it was her. It was definitely her because this doesn't look like my handwriting. Yeah. I don't doubt my hearts that way either. It's in Spanish, so I can't really read it. Well, I could, but, you know, I'm not gonna waste the time in this video reading. <laughs> now, here's another one. This is the first draft that I created about the monologue. It's called My Real Life Dream. Now I called it You Can't Do It because it's about following your dreams and then doing it. And I kind of talk about my dream of making my cartoons become real characters and have their own show, things like that. So kind of kept in. It's I have Running the Galaxies, that YouTube channel, remember? And that's where I got motivated to do monologue scripts, which is something that I'm going to get into in a little bit. But uh, at the moment, still training for it. These are drafts of main characters of mine that I kept and will not show because of thievery. Now, I have here 
a certificate of participation for baptism. I got baptized December 25, 2009 in Puerto Rico. Or, no, I got baptized, no, hold on, I can't remember, I can't remember what church I got, I think I got baptized twice, I don't remember, no, I got baptized in, uh, I got baptized in an actual lake, actually, which was pretty cool. During our class, we had to do a self-portrait of ourselves, and this is the portrait of me. Does it look like me? I don't know if it does, but I think I still did a pretty good job trying to be a human, right? I always told myself that I couldn't really draw a human, but that's what I did. Now, when I was young, people always requested drawings from me. I wish it's something that people demanded now. So I made an Invader Zim comic. The comic has Zim wanting to mess with Dib, so I did front and back. I remember it took me a long time to finish this comic, too. Because I couldn't get into it. And let me see. So he's just trying to figure out what exactly it is that he could do to kind of mess with him. I think he's trying to use the pig for some reason. And I even created my own character that kind of looks like Yaz. You can see her right there. And let's see there are... Oh, and then Dib comes into the picture. Look at Dib. And he just says it's a pig. What the heck are you doing with that? And he points it out. He's like, curse you. I'll get you next time. Basically, that's what happened there. And I thought it was cute. Now, I got obsessed with the movie 9. So then I created some pictures out of markers. So this is 3 and 4 because they're twinsies. And this one is six, because he was my favorite character, too. Kind of used my art skills to draw stuff. And in my childhood, I drew a lot, so it's something that I really wanted to keep a hold of. All right, I'm going to try to put these back somehow. Let me see. Now I need to do the other side of the folder. This was one side. Now I need the other side of the folder. Okay, now this side has a whole bunch of plays and brochures and a certificate. Now this brochure was something I made in biology class and the reason I wanted to keep this is because I've never been able to do something like this before. I thought it was really cool how I was able to do a brochure. So I created my own brochure. When we do big projects like this, it kind of means a lot to me. I wrote this all myself and put the pictures and everything. This was in high school, of course, or middle school, can't remember. But either way, I was still happy about that. I have a certificate here saying congratulations. So I got a reward for coolest magic trick. And the magic trick that it's talking about from this teacher is that is the story of little joe and i do have that in running the galaxy so if you ever want to see that magic trick go on i do tell the story of little joe using the cards what else do i have in here oh this is my baptism certification so this is the church that i got baptized in and it was see it was in new mexico in uh May 29 in 2010. It was Templo Bethel. Pechotan. And uh, it's so pretty, isn't it? I really love that. So, what else do I have here? Oh yes, my place. Now, when I was in high school, I went to drama club. And in drama club, I did plays. And I always loved to play the character that was mean. Because it's fun to play those characters. 
Now, I did a tiny little commercial called Oil of Calais, and I was basically um, Helen of Troy in this one. They kind of made it with Helen of Troy. And I thought it was so cool. I was having so much fun with it. It's really awesome. And of course, I kept the script because, hello, I mean, it's a huge memory to keep the scripts of the plays that I've done. Now, this one is Cafe Murder. And this one I remember the most because I was the character that got murdered. I was a mean girl, lady, I should say, who uh, gets murdered or almost murdered with water. But I come out not being allergic to water because I said I would die if I had water. But, uh, the waiter didn't like me because I was a snob and always mean to her. And then my sisters didn't like me because I was always a snob with them. And then I have the maitre d' who was kind of out for me. Everyone had some sort of motive in some way because my character was just really, like, you better do what I say or I'm going to smack you. And... So they all had kind of motives of who murdered me. And then towards the end, you kind of... Obviously, they show who murdered me. And I kind of did a little spoil alert about the water there. But it's still a really cool play. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, we're not making this play up as we go honest. This is a play that I would have done if we had the chance. I don't know why we didn't. I can't remember, but it was... I thought it was really cool, and obviously I kept it, right? So let's see here. I really like the way it looks. Okay. Next one. This is my all-time favorite. The This is the play that got me into Drama Club. It's Dracula's Boarding House. And in Dracula's Boarding House... Yeah, it, it's all messed up and everything. In Dracula's boarding house, I kind of like mess around with Renfield about certain things. And then, you know, we have like fight scenes and things like that. And then it just continues on with whatever the play is. We kind of added things, subtracted others. And then these two humans kind of go into the, go into the boarding house and kind of mess with him a little bit. So yes, I was able to play Dracula and I loved it so much. Here's the little flyer for Dracula. And they actually called it Dracula's boarding house because I was a girl, even though we kind of wanted to go with Dracula. But at least we have this here. That was cool. I really loved it. But there you go. Now I have... This is the last one. It's... Uh, America's Next Top Model Student. This was really fun because I was a cheerleader and I loved how I was able to switch between winners and cheerleading and stuff like that. And it was a lot of fun to play this play. Or all of them for that matter. Let's see what else do I have in here. Oh. So I've never been to rodeos before. When I did go to rodeos, I did get signatures from cowgirls that did rodeos. And I thought that was really cool. I felt like I was meeting celebrities, right? So for those of you that like rodeos, here's one of them. Her name was Jackie Johnson. Miss Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo. Then I have here Danica Jackson. There's Danica Jackson. Um, then I have here, what's her name? Brittany Truman. So then this is Brittany Truman. All right. One last things. This is a research paper I did about animation, and I got a 98 out of 100. I don't remember what I lost in those two points, or what I talk about here, but I do know that it has to do with animation and how to help it. Let's see. 
Hmm. Whoops, something happened with the... Um, the way I printed it. Maybe that's why I kind of got two points out. But other than that, came out pretty good. I think I give an history about animation here. I give a history about animation. But my writing was always impressive to the teachers, so they gave me good points. And you will see more of that in the next. Ooh, and this is me and my family at Medieval Times. Just to show you here. Medieval Times. So, Medieval Times is a restaurant in Florida and probably some other states, I don't know. But the point is, you go there and you do everything traditionally, just like the Medieval Times and all that. And it's so cool. Like, I really loved it. It was, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So, in conclusion, for this video, that is all that I can show you for my time capsule. And you'll have to see the next video so that you can uh, see what else is in my time capsule because I actually still have more stuff. I didn't think that this folder alone was going to take so much room in this work. But I'm glad that I could be here sharing this stuff with you. So I'll see you next time.